Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media and Evergreen Podcasts, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope you've been having a great week so far. I most certainly have been, because we are officially one week away from Heavy Montreal Presents Vox and Hops Brutal Montreal. That's right, a true metal and beer festival is happening in my hometown of Montreal at Corona Theater on December 17th. And I'm just so excited about it. My band is performing Cryptopsy with my friends The Agonist, The Great Sabatini, Necronic Mutation, and Burning the Oppressor. All night long, you'll be able to enjoy amazing brews from some of Quebec's best microbreweries, such as BG Brasserie Urbaine, Massorum Brassatorium, Brasserie du Bas Canada, Sir John Brewing Company, Saint Cambado, and Brassard de Montréal. Tickets are selling extremely quickly, and if you are planning on coming to the show, I strongly suggest that you pick one up right now via the link in the description of this this podcast so excited to be on stage next week staring out at a bunch of metalheads enjoying amazing craft beers and my hometown i can't wait now before we jump into today's episode i'd just like to ask you to follow the vox and hops metal podcast on the podcast platform of your choice more than that i'm also asking you to tell a friend about the podcast if there's someone in your life that you know loves podcasts that's super into them and if you haven't already well you should tell them about the vox and hops metal podcast you can tell them that there are over 300 episodes with some of the world's best metal musicians for them to discover on their favorite podcast platform. If you would encourage one of your friends to become a brand new Vox and Hops head, that would be something that I would truly appreciate. Now, today's episode was recorded at Folly Brewing last Saturday in Toronto. This is an amazing episode all about How About Some Coffee, the brand new Vox and Hops collab with George Panayi of the Meet Me for Coffee podcast and Jamie Morris of Folly Brewing. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 300. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Here we go. Very stoked uh, to be here at Folly Brew Pub. I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy, the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. Uh, I'm joined uh, by my friend. My name is George. I got the Meet Me for Coffee podcast, and uh, we're here at Folly Brewing with our friend Jamie. Hello, I'm Jamie. I'm the brewer at Folly Brew Pub here in Toronto. So this is a, a very special uh, crossover episode. It's actually our second crossover episode that me and George have done. Uh, I just had him on. He had just had me on. And uh, I actually had Jamie on the podcast. He was actually the first metal brewer I had on. Am I crazy with that? The what second an honor. or something like that? Maybe first the or second. second. I'm up there. Uh, two years ago. Uh, definitely uh, we had... It's, been a time that we've been connected and uh there's a story about why we're here tonight uh recording a live podcast at folly brew pub it's because we just dropped a three-way collab called how about some coffee and uh this beer came to life thanks to uh jamie really uh i had george on the podcast as i mentioned and i asked him i was like i love making merchandise i'm an extreme metal vocalist uh my whole mindset is about making things and then selling them to people and hoping to get money for it in exchange uh, instead of doing things for free as I've been doing for the past few years of my life but uh, I was like why don't you have your own coffee yet and it was in the works and then uh, the opportunity to collaborate came around with Jamie and Matt and I uh, kicked my ass in the gear and here we are today we got a nice dark Sumatra blended with some awesome hops and it's called how about some coffee it's amazing yes but uh, the question was why didn't you have a coffee for your podcast okay yet? I, I was really slacking man <laughs> he kicked me in the ass so i told him i told him during the episode i said if you get a coffee made for your podcast i will find a brewery to make that beer and i swear to god the day that the episode came out i emailed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i brew and listen to 12 to 14 hours of podcasts a day. Wow. Because I work alone and I don't talk to anyone. So I like hearing people talk to me. And I heard it and I was like, well, that makes sense. Let's make a stout. Coffee and stout. What? So it's really one of my favorite styles. So, so let's just go deeper right into what this beer is. Uh, you are Does the everybody expert. have one? Yeah, great. Well, let's, let's cheers to that. Because we all got to taste it before we get into it. Yeah, so Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Smooth. We want more. We want more. 
Six <laughs> percent ABV coffee stout, the Sumatra coffee going in it. So talk to us exactly about what's going on in this beer. Uh, when you hit me up and you were like, "I want to make that beer," did you already have a recipe in mind? Uh, what, where, what is this beer? Where did it come from? Um, I don't know if a lot of the people here know what how beer is made. It's made right behind us. But explain exactly how this how this happened. So uh, I just thought stout. Um, the next step was asking George what kind of coffee he had available and what he wanted to bring to the table. He said Sumatra, and I know there's a lot of tropical notes in there, a lot of fruity notes. Um, and I thought, okay, well, I want like dry and roasty so that we get a lot of that fruit coming out of the coffee. So you really see the coffee uh, coming into play in the stout, but then you get the roastiness and deep malt flavor of the stout balanced with the coffee. And then what would be the reaction of Folly when, when you said, I want to collaborate with these two podcasters? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoked. Uh, like I said, I, I work alone and I, and I get to do a lot of things um, creatively on my own, which is good. But it's also like nice to bounce ideas off of people. Tina, our manager, is excellent, and she had... Shout out to Tina. Uh, there she is. There she is. Uh, Thank you. She's certi- certified Cicerone. Uh, that's not a pasta noodle. It's actually an experienced beer drinker, uh, for those that don't know. And uh, she has a lot of knowledge, and I, I, I'm very grateful that I get to bounce ideas off of her, and we sort of work together to come to... Uh, coming up with the recipe ideas and, and, and building sort of where we want to go in a brewing direction. Uh, so that's really nice. I love that very much. Let's give uh, everyone here maybe a bit of a history. I know where you've come from. I don't know if everyone knows where you've come from. Sure. Let's hear your brewer's story. Why do you brew beer? Why do you wake up in the morning and make beer for a living? <sighs> uh, to keep drinking. Uh, but <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I got my start uh, as a youngster. Uh, my dad was doing the brew in the box things. Um, and he's like, I want to brew beer for everybody, the family coming over for Christmas. So I'm going to get this brew in a box thing. And he was making it. And then uh, one of your classic questions is, what's your first beer? And I think mine was probably uh, some brew in a box amber ale. And... Uh, Dad was, I'm like, what are you doing, Dad? Making beer. Wow. It's the same as cooking? <laughs> yeah, it's the same as cooking. Okay, cool. I'm going to make beer. And then, you know, years, years later, uh, I ended up getting into homebrew. Uh, started homebrewing. Uh, and then for the last six years, I've been working at Henderson Brewing. Uh, shout out to Henderson. We've done multiple collabs there. Uh, Chris, what's up, buddy? Shout out to Chris. Shout out Thrashed. to Chris. Uh, Brutal North America we did there. Grzycki, which is a smoked champagne ale. It was so uh, good. Which was so good. Um, and then, and, and, and just to let everybody know, also our past is we did the first collab of the devastation of the world COVID <laughs> tour. That uh, is true. That is true. I wanted to go into the history of, <laughs> of how you and I met. Yeah. It actually all started here in Toronto yeah. back in 2019. Uh, you had hit me up. I was doing this thing when Cryptopsy went on tour. You bring me some craft beer. I'll give you a ticket no, to home, the show. It was a homebrew I made for you. You made the very first branded Vox and Hops beer for me. So I'd, I'd had Le Fermentat that I'd already brewed a beer for my one year anniversary, but you gave me like a bottle with a label of it was a hazy IPA. And I remember being on stage the last time I played in Canada before the pandemic. And uh, full circle, here we are. No, I remember being on stage and being like, I just can't wait to finish this to go taste that beer. <laughs> <laughs> Lots and I still of have hops. it. And I still have it. And I still have the bottle. You drank it though, right? I definitely okay, drank good, it. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Kept it next. It's next to my TV. Perfect. And uh, yeah, and there's that feeling. And I asked George about it before he was holding the beer. And he was like, this is so cool. How do you, how do you feel about having a beer with your podcast logo on it? Uh, it's fantastic. Just, you know, looking at it and seeing it come to fruition, it's definitely, it kind of gives me a bit of the feels. And uh, I don't know if it's the two or three pints I've had, but I, you know, I've, I feel pretty good. You know, so <laughs> I want to thank everyone who was involved and everyone who came out to support us. It's uh, how about some coffee? Let's have 10 more and 
Take some home as well, yeah. I feel like I can run really far right now. <laughs> yeah, we should, we, should all do a, we should all do a lap around the block. So that is something like uh, people have to understand when you drink beers with coffee in it. Yeah. The caffeine doesn't boil away. It's no, it still doesn't. I very added much caffeine. There. I didn't take anything away. I added all caffeine <laughs> to it. So it's like... So how did you do that? How did you get his Sumatra coffee into the beer? What, what processes did you use to get there? First step uh, was... A uh, nice bottom or a, uh, a, a French press of coffee just to taste it and get an idea of what it was. And then uh, it was cold brew. Uh, so I filled a bucket, 20, 20 liter bucket. Uh, I think it was, how much did you give me? Like eight kilos, I think. Yeah, somewhere eight around kilo, there. So I, four kilos of ground bean uh, in a bag and then filled, like covered the bag with water. And then just filled it with ice and then just kept topping it up with water as the ice slowly melted and then uh, kept tasting it just to see where it was at. And over 48 hours, it, I was shaking. <laughs> and, uh, I, didn't, I didn't drink all of that in 48 hours. I was just like tasting a little bit just to see where it was at. And it was like, okay, this, now I, this is where I want it. Let's put, it. Stout was made. Let's put it in. Amazing, amazing. And the stout, uh, is it like a, ca- like a classic recipe you've used Just many a times? Class, yeah, classic stout recipe. Very simple. Four ingredients. Um, certain styles, like uh, traditional stout styles. Certain, you know, the certain styles I like to keep really simple. Four ingredients. There's, in, in, in Brewer's World, there's the three to one ratio. So you can do like three malt, two hops, one yeast. Hey, guys, welcome. Um, and... I, I, I kind of was thinking that, but it just needed a little bit more. So I got, it was just chocolate, uh, Maris Otter, roasted barley, and there's another one in there that I forget right now, because all I think about is coffee. <laughs> and I get the jitters. But it's delicious. It's got like a, like a the, the bitter bite of the coffee. There's the chocolate. What do you got there, George? Go for it. Well, it tastes like my coffee, first off. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Do you, feel, do, do you actually feel you can really like pick it out? Yeah. Just like the, the very first taste, like the muskiness of the coffee, the dark, the dark Sumatra. Um, you know, I've had a lot of uh, coffee stouts, and I'm not going to say, you know, this is like... You a, can say it's the best. <laughs> it's the best one. Um, <laughs> Just please pat me on but the back. I, 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 was, I, 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 was, I was just going to say, like, there, there are some coffee stands that you have that are very bitter. Um, there's coffee stands that kind of hit you the wrong way. This one goes down great the whole time. So it's done very, very well. Why did you choose the Sumatra for your... What, what, what drew you to that? You're the coffee expert. I'm the guy that drinks a lot of craft beer and talks to metalheads. Um, it's why, on you now, buddy. Why did you this choose your that, part. that exact coffee? <laughs> uh, I picked the Dark Sumatra because... Um, so this is Dark Sumatra, but it's like dark, dark Sumatra. It's something that is very unique. It's, it's uh, roasted a, a very uh, different way. Um, in of course, what, my what roaster. way? Uh, it's, kept, it's kept in the, in the roaster an extra 10 minutes um, to bring it kind of a bit of a more musky taste. Um, but uh, I was originally wanted to do like a Jamaican, like a Jamaican blue uh, coffee bean. But of course, like with COVID and everything else and the cost, and it would be like a very high end coffee. And um, I felt that at, from all the selections I had, uh, that dark dark Sumatra was the, the smoothest one I could find. Awesome. And uh, it ended up being like the, the roasters. Um, they have a coffee shop as well, like we were talking before, and. Uh, you know, this is their signature blend, and this is my signature blend because it's it's the best, right? It's the smoothest uh, dark roast coffee you will ever have. So um, it does taste amazing, man. Where is the roastery for the shout out? Uh, she's in Kitchener uh, at a place called Cafe O uh, over on Victoria Street. And uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool business. She roasts for a lot of big roasters and... I'm happy that you know we've partnered up to do this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Another thing I love is the label art. Uh, talk, talk me through this. How did this come to life? Uh, it was very simple, and I love when that happens. Uh, you sent me the label, and I said, that's fucking awesome. Approved. Uh, I thought we'd get the uh, typical sort of client feedback. I want my logo bigger. <laughs> but it works pretty well in no, the, no. Like the layout of this, la- uh, this logo or this sort of label. Yeah, I, 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 
honestly can't speak to it because it our graphic designer and he just uh, he cranks them out. Uh, but he's got a process and uh, a sort of look and feel, and I really like it because it's sort of like camouflage looking, and then it's also looks like what a coffee label I feel like should look like. It sort of looks like coffee beans a little bit too. Yeah, though. there's like a coffee bean thing going on there, and yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a very calming design. It's almost like you know, sit back, have a coffee, or it's kind of like the calm before a mosh pit, you know. Uh, going into a concert and, you know, having Randall Blythe or even yourself saying, you know, everybody get to the side. We're going to start now. No karate in the pit, though. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) No karate. (laughs) Crawling. (laughs) I definitely wanted to ask uh, if you guys could collaborate again without me. Also with coffee. You're disgusting. Oh. Well, you can come next no, time. No, no, I'm interested, but like, you typically, you typically see coffee and stouts, which is why this was the first decision that came to my mind. But where else can you put coffee in beer? We were talking about a coffee IPA. Ooh, for the hop heads, the coffee heads, the cra- all the crazies out there. Yeah, it sounds so good. Um, I just think beer in general sounds good with coffee. Is like two of my favorite things. Um, I don't want to go on a list and list the next 10 favorite things I like, but those are pretty close to the top. And yeah, yeah coffee IPA. We talked about uh, originally a Vietnamese coffee IPA. Yeah. And today, the, I think the original idea was the Vietnamese coffee uh, stout. And then it evolved into George's uh, blessed family blend. So I think very important, um, which is cool. It's super cool. I, I didn't know you could have family blends of coffee. You, uh, we also talked about the Turkish coffee. IPA. Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee could be the cool one. And it, could we pour it out in one of those kettles? That'd be cool. That's whole we'll dude on. That's whole we'll pour pints. I already know what our next collab is going to be. I haven't pitched it to you yet, but I'm ready. I figure you're going to say yes because it's a continuation of something that we started that we didn't get to finish. Yeah. Well, you finished it. But we didn't get to enjoy it. Is it the I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's talk about metal. Let's talk about... Um, I know your metal stories. I'm not sure about everyone that here knows that. I don't know if everyone that's listening on George's podcast knows your metal story. Obviously, a big metal head. You were telling me about going to a Guar show. Seeing you the first time. That and just, re- just recently you were, you were And I was just recently at a Guar show. <laughs> Nate bombed up. So, so talk, talk to me about metal and what... It means to you being a metalhead, and then the secondary question being a metalhead brewer. Uh, it started for me uh, not in the astral plane of this universe, <laughs> but as a tiny fetus in my mom's womb. I'm originally from Windsor, Ontario. South of born and raised south of Detroit, as Journey once said. <laughs> and, north, north, north of Detroit. <laughs> well, it's sure. <laughs> born and raised south of Detroit. It's south of Detroit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what up, boys? Home of the best pizza in Canada, man. Best pizza. Have you guys had Ambassador Pizza? Have you guys had Ambassador Pizza here? Yeah? Best. Best pizza. Windsor Windsor Pizza. Best. Anyways, uh, my mom and dad went to go see Meatloaf Bat Out of Hell tour while she was pregnant with me at Harpo's in Detroit. Shout out to Harpo's. Hell yeah, I played there. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Harpo's. Uh, I remember pissing in an overflowing shit diarrhea filled toilet at Harpo's uh, when I was 16 after, at seeing Seven Dust. Wow. Yeah. I, I played Harpo's to no one. Yeah. There yeah. was nobody there. Well, you can't see anyone. That's the other thing. <laughs> no, no, there was nobody there. There was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> fell, they fell through the floor. It was, one of the, it was one of those. That was also the show that my tour manager said, you don't leave the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, my, my parents are great. They listen to rock and roll, at, you know, and, and they had a record collection. So we got to go... Uh, I, me and my sister, they make dinner, TVs off, pick a record... I saw that first Black Sabbath album. Oh, yeah. And that <laughs> scary witch on there. And would just, that's the one I wanted. They're like, God, quit it with the Black Sabbath. Uh, but it was the coolest <laughs> album. And then the other one was the Motley Crue, Shout Out of the Devil. Dad had that one. And uh, would pick that all the time. How do I be, be one of these guys? I love comic books. And they looked like comic book characters, Motley Crue in the 80s. Um, so that kind of started it. And then. 
my first show, one of your one of your questions is, "What's your first beer?" And it was other than it was my dad's homebrew, but my first real one was uh, me and my buddy were our chore on the Sunday was chop wood for our fireplace, yeah. and I'll give you a twelve pack of Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh, like, yeah, <laughs> we're getting drunk. We're like yeah, six, very 15, drunk. 16 years old, <laughs> and then that night we were going to see Megadeth on the Risk tour in Detroit at State Theater. Uh, Static X opened, uh, and it was wonderful. And my dad took me and my 16-year-old drunk buddy to Megadeth, Dude. and it was amazing. It seems like your dad is like a big formative person. He the helped beer, big time. Helping you, being supporting in yeah. metal. Yeah. Has he come here? Has he tasted these beers? He has. His new, his new uh, venture is growing hops in the backyard. For you? For Yes, oh, and for uh, himself, yeah, I guess. For he's, himself, yeah. He's still, he's still brewing, too. Uh, not really, no. So now it's just for me. But anyways, uh, we have an ESB on tap. Um, I always, uh, British family, always want to keep a British beer on tap because uh, I love them. They're the best pub drinking beers there are. So so the ESB has, I, I use dad's uh, two-year-old, two, second-generation Cascade hops in the mash. Very, so very cool. He is fucking stoked. Very, it's very cool. Basically, his beer. He's I like, love that. This is my beer. This is the one that I've done. This is my I love symphony. It. Has he come to a brew day? <laughs> yeah, they came a little while ago. They came a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he hasn't been for a brew day, but we came for dinner and had a nice time, and they tried it, and he was crushing ESPs all night. Amazing. Uh, because he was like, this is my beer, and I, I made this, basically. Amazing, <laughs> so, amazing. So he was very stoked. Yeah. To explain to people that you said second harvest, second generation of the hops. I know, I know this. I'm not sure if anyone else knows this, but when you plant hops and you grow hops, the first few harvests is basically are few useless. Years, you're garbage. Uh, the, the first, why, why is that? Because uh, that just, I don't know why. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like grapes uh, and, and, and like anything. Uh, you're not good till you're mature, right? <laughs> uh, so it takes a little bit. Drywall knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like it, it, a good three-year growth to get those binds nice and hearty. Um, that's what it takes uh, for good hops. So he's on his second year, so it's still kind of like experimental and figuring it out and like conditions and what he needs to do in the area like where he's growing them we got a bit of a bush in the my parents backyard so he's got to clear a certain area he was up there like the trimming trees to get the right sunlight in like he's taking it very seriously which is super cool so maybe that could also be in the next gary's gary's cascade hops (laughs) in the next (laughs) coffee collab I, I know that George started a podcast during a pandemic yeah. to fill the void. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of not talking. So I, originally the podcast was started. I announced it like uh, five years before that. Um, I used to be on the radio and I was very sick of uh, talking at people. And uh, I was like, hey, man, let's talk to people. Let's have interesting conversations. And originally I was... Uh, interviewing Uber drivers and whatever like that. Wow. So in, the, in the car while yeah, you were going so to places? they didn't even know they are being interviewed. So Really? Yeah, I have That's like, illegal. Wow, rude. Yeah. <laughs> wow, rude. I was kind of like a private eye, like an FBI agent, right? I was in there and I was like, hey, because uh, me and my fiance would be going to bars or whatever. Oh, let's go to this bar. And I'd be like, hey, how's it going? Where are you from? The guy would be like, oh, I'm from Syria. No, I have five kids. So how'd you get here? And he would tell me a story about the war. It was all on my phone. And it was pretty interesting. So we launched in uh, the pandemic started in, uh, what, 2020? Feels like such a long time. Um, I had my first son in February 2020. Um, I started it. I started it for him. This whole thing is for him. Um, And I... I wanted to talk to different people. So I was interviewing like psychiatrists, motivational speakers. And then I had a guy from uh, Paramount Pictures ask me to interview some of his actors. I was like, okay, well, this is not what the show is about, but let's, let's go ahead with that. And then I had a guy named Larry Hankin. If you guys know him, he was uh, the butler on Billy Madison and he was in Breaking Bad. And that kind of spurred things over for me. Um, then Kenny Aronoff came on, some guys from Pink Floyd and Megadeth and... Uh, you know, it's been an interesting experience interviewing people and getting to know them in a, like a very intimate, intimate setting. 
I wish it was over coffee every time, maybe even even a coffee stout. One day, maybe we can bring maybe a guy like Kim Coates down here and talk to him. Um, he maybe Kiefer Sutherland's around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stuff like that. That we guy likes that. drinking. I think well, I would imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> we, we have we have we have formidable evidence. confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's more than just that's why podcasting is good because it's it, it's more than just uh, you know interviewing somebody. It's getting the stories and then getting to know the person on a different level. Like I'm here having a beer with you, which I could have never imagined maybe six or seven months ago. Um, and you know here we are, meet me for coffee, box and hops, and folly brewing, and a kick-ass brewmaster man. Cheers, buddy. Uh, well, and and for me and Matt uh, to go back with. Now done multiple collabs and could never do it in person. So here we are. Cheers, buddy. I'm very happy to be here. I could I couldn't make it out to the last one. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I am curious how you have been filling the void of going to shows, being around people. How did you fill the void? I'm very lucky that I have the podcast to keep me busy. That's how I've been filling the void of performing on stage. You went to Guar just recently, but how did you fill the void from everything before until recently? Uh. Well, I'm very grateful that people started doing the live stream uh, shows. Uh, I've had multiple solo pits in my living room, <laughs> um, which is really rare. Well, Andy came for one. Yeah, cheers, buddy. We had, we had a nice sit-down acoustic Mastodon show in the living room. That very was really nice. cool. In an aquarium. Yes. Yeah, that was really cool. Very cool. Uh, thank you, Macedon. Uh, but I honestly, uh, I have been working like a dog. Uh, people are at home. People are boozing. And so I've been brewing beer nonstop. Uh, formerly at Henderson, I was, I was working there majority of the pandemic. And I was still, we were brewing nonstop. It just everything became cans, mm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was that, like basically Henderson used to ship kegs. To there's kegs, and there, there's and stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So now it was just well, no more kegs. Now people are just drinking cans. So now it was uh, became a bit of a logistical nightmare. Where are you going to store where these cans? all these cans yeah, that yeah. we have to package coming in? So it was it was it was part like logistics manager slash brewers plus the team over there is great and yeah we're 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 brew, i was brewed nonsense i've worked the whole entire time like it's almost like it didn't affect me at all other than now i'm wearing a mask at work <laughs> and washing my hands excessively <laughs> sanitizing everything no i would pretty much sanitize every, everything anyway yeah being you should a brewer, be doing that in the yeah, first yeah, place thank you, <laughs> yes thank you thank you but yeah, uh, the excessive hand sanitizing where you have crippling, my calluses are now just dried out to like peeling they're peeling and everything off. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how about when you got this job, uh, the switch from Henderson? That yeah. decision must have been difficult. It, it was very difficult, but it was all, also, yes, all those things. Uh, so, it was, it was going full speed to. Oh, now I'm waiting. We, we've made some massive changes uh, fully. Uh, we got new tanks in. We're in, improving some of the systems here and getting rid of sort of cleaning. We cleaned it up a lot and now like brewing it on site, um, which they were doing before, but just I had to change and clean a lot of things because they were basically like a funk lab before. Um, I guess so if people don't understand that, it means that there's a wild yeast, and wild yeast is hard. It's hard, it's hard to kill, yeah. and it spreads everywhere. Yes, it ruins everything. It's like a terrible STD. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, where all these, uh, where all our brothers are sitting over here, this was, there was 20 barrels all really? along this wall full of like funky-ass shit. And so we're, they're like, okay, well, can we make use of anything in here? And... I don't know how long they were sitting there, but some of them were, uh, yeah, not, not <laughs> nice. <laughs> I uh, well, took a lot, took a lot of walks around the block to get some fresh air after <laughs> sniffing some of those barrels. You've got you got one of the best jobs in the world, I think. Oh, uh, I know that. I, I drink beer every day, so imagining 
you know, trying different beers and trying. The QC beers. is very important. Exactly. <laughs> Are you guys hiring somebody for that too? Uh, yeah, I love that job. We need someone to operate the coffee maker over there. I, I am curious about how you get through a day like that. It's quality control, tasting all the beers. You learn it probably very quickly as a brewer not to overdo it. Yes. Yeah. Because then people are coming in. I, I also have the luxury of now having my own schedule. Yeah. So I'm not on that sort of come in at six to start brewing till, you know, a shift work kind of thing. It's kind of whatever I want. So if I want a long ass day, I can do that. And if I want a short day, I can do that too. I'm, I make you yeah, an artist schedule. Hell yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I, you have to keep that in check. I don't do anything until after one and after I've had my coffee flow and then I've had a little snack and then uh, clean palate and then get into tasting, make sure everything is good and then uh, carry on the day. Bottling days are different. Yes. <laughs> uh, it can be a lot more fun. Uh, things turn out differently when bottling. <laughs> I, I want to ask a question. So I, I'm under the impression a lager takes, what, 28 days, right, to make? Yeah, I like, I like my lagers at six weeks. Six weeks. So how, how, long, how long for a, a stout? Like how does, what's the aging or fermenting process or length for that? So we're about uh, 12 to 14 days on an ale, which I use ale yeast on uh, the stout. Um, and then, you know, a couple of days of, uh, cold conditioning. That's when you crash it and drop every, all the proteins and yeast out of solution. Everything settles to the bottom of these cones here. And that makes it easy for you to collect yeast and repitch yeast. Uh, so yeah, all in maybe like 20 days with like packaging and that sort of thing. And you are actually into metal. Like I went in into the back here and your my tanks are Slipknot. Yeah, they're all Slipknot. <laughs> Every tank has a picture of a different Slipknot member. If you're 555, five, five, I have 9 tanks and they're all the members of Slipknot. <laughs> uh, I yeah, so I, I yeah, love metal uh, and Slipknot obviously. I went to Ozfest 99 and saw those guys and I was just like what in the hell is happening here? It was kind of like 99 was almost like sort of like dad metal. And then there was Slipknot on the second stage and it was like, what? <laughs> Just destroying everything. Yeah. Just destroyed everything. And then the next year, uh, Tattoo the Earth, that happened. Yeah. And that was like the kickoff of sort of new metal. Like Mudvayne was there. Head PE. Uh, Sepultura, new metal years. The Chaos American Head Charge was probably there. They're really big. Yeah. Nothing Face. Yeah, you know, <laughs> some of the classics. Hey, the people really like that thing. I fucking love them. <laughs> fucking love them. Uh, what was another uh, Pledge of Allegiance tour? Yeah. Remember that was Slipknot, uh, Slayer, Ramstein, American Head Charge. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they, were, they were massive. They were huge, man. Yeah. 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 Um, I love it. I love influencing it. One of your questions that I never answered. Um, being a metal brewer. Being a metal yeah. brewer. Uh, the best fucking bands have four members and there's four ingredients in beer. Leave it at that. I love that. Uh, I asked you when we did our crossover, classic wrap-up question. I probably didn't ask you because I probably wasn't asking it at the time. The protocol of, quest of Vox and Hops questions. <laughs> there was a the reason for the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um I typically wrap up with this. We'll wrap up with it today. Um, I'd love to hear uh, what your hangover cure is. Yeah. George, you could say yours again, but we'll do it. Do you, uh, maybe it's changed in the last couple maybe, weeks. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, we were drinking last time I talked, so I'm not sure what I told you. Um, coffee and uh, something really, really greasy. So, uh, yeah, that's if you want to get me after a night of drinking, that's the way to go. A pint of water or a liter of water before bed. Probably an Advil. Ibuprofen, not to give them money. Advil, fuck Advil. <laughs> Shoppers one is just as fine. Um, then a walk to the pub with a pint, full English, and a coffee, and then another, and then leave and get a warm pint of lager. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Warm pint of lager. As as everyone knows, I suffer in silence. Suffers in silence. Uh, my or drinks an insane imperial 
<laughs> fucked brew up juice. brew juice sour <laughs> a whatever fruit sour with coffee in it yeah, yeah. <laughs> also known as a slushy or fruit puree brutal juice but yeah but uh, <laughs> I, I if i may i've always wondered because sometimes when i belch after having like six pints of lager it's a good sounds like a good scream i try and like <laughs> make it as brutal as possible do you do that in front of your kids I scream like, a lot. Whoa. You know what I did the other day, and then they were very unimpressed. I have a, <laughs> a show coming up, December seventeenth. Brutal Montreal is happening. Go to if you're in Montreal, go. Cryptopsy is performing for the first time since July 2019. Congratulations! Buddy. Have not screamed on stage since then. You've been practicing. I've been practicing in the house. So I was alone with the kids. Uh, my Just grabbing them by the throat and fucking and screaming in their face. And I put the set face. on. <laughs> and, I, and I went through the set, but they got really tired after like the third song. But they were like playing ukulele and screaming too. Did they windmill headbang in the living room? Uh, my son is pretty into it. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have but, beautiful uh, hair like you? He has gorgeous red hair. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, then they were very unimpressed and fed up with me after a short, short while. Yeah. <laughs> One day they'll really appreciate it, man. When, 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 when I'm do it anymore probably when you let them go on youtube and they're like wow dad played a whacking you have how many yeah how many views but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're weak dad <laughs> this is amazing uh we're gonna keep hanging out uh, but not with all of you listening at home you should have been here so that you could have hung out with us and enjoyed yeah. this amazing amazing collab how about some coffee the coffee stout this is a true honor george thank you so much george Thank you. It's been awesome. It's been a everybody. pleasure. Matt, Finally, thank, thank you. you. We're handshaking everyone. Woo. We're touching hands. Thank you. Thank you. And it's wonderful. Everyone is here with us. Make some Shout noise. out to everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank yeah. you so much. This is amazing. Live podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Man, this was a blast. This was the first live podcast recording that I have done since my one year anniversary when I had Lord Worm on the podcast at Turbo House. It was just so much fun to be back in front of people, asking questions, conducting an interview with George and Jamie. I love collaborating with people. I love working with other podcasters. You guys know that. I love hanging out with podcasters and I love hanging out with brewers. So this was just a night in heaven for me. I had so much fun. The beer is phenomenal. If you can pick one up, you absolutely should. Head on over to Folly Brew Pub and grab yourself a bottle of this. It's amazing. Massive shout out to Jamie for making an amazing beer and a massive shout out to George for being a part of this epic collab. Now, if you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list. You can do it on my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S.com. And when you do that, you shall receive one email a week containing all of the details of everything that has happened throughout the past week in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, including all the details for any episodes which I dropped throughout that week if i've been a guest on someone else's podcast as well as any information for any cool projects that i have in the works before i announced them to the public you'll also get to see the album reviews that my album review crew dropped that week and the brand new links to the brutal awakenings playlist which is available on both apple music and spotify and is curated by my man jerry monk the metal architect himself there is just so much going on in the world of the vox and hops metal podcast i would hate for you to miss a single thing so please sign up to that mailing List. The Vox and Hops Metal Podcast is brought to you by Sound Talent Media and Evergreen Podcasts. I will be back next week with yet again three episodes, one on Tuesday and then two on Friday. But until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh.